The movie starts with Frank, a Vietnam War veteran, on a bus reflecting on his life. His life has not panned out the way he hoped it would have, and he wonders what went wrong. He had a happy childhood growing up on a ranch and doing what young boys do. In his teenage years, he was in love with a beautiful girl, and the two promised each other eternal love. However, Frank had to join the army, as did many boys at the time. Frank promised to return as soon as he could so he could start building a home with his girlfriend. Unfortunately, he ended up spending 10 years in the military. By the time he came back, his love had married someone else and had two children, with the third one on the way. Despite the mishap, Frank decided to do something with his life, so he applied for the police academy, hoping that his military background would boost his application. Unfortunately, this too didn't pan out, and he was rejected. Consequently, he bought a cart and started selling hot dogs on the streets. This gave him money to pay his bills for quite a time. One morning, he found a hot dog truck parked in his street corner. The truck took almost all of his business. Eventually, Frank got tired and started living a drifter's life. He moves from place to place, doing odd jobs to keep himself going. His reverie is disrupted when two wannabe gangsters enter the bus. The gangsters start bothering and harassing the passengers who are too meek to react. Frank holds his position but intervenes when the gangsters bully an old man. He approaches the gangsters and releases his frustration on them. The other passengers are so moved by this heroic act that they start recording him. The video is posted on social media and Frank quickly gets a heroic reputation as badass. People embrace badass and he becomes an inspiration to many with merchandise like t-shirts selling out. Whenever police officers encounter him on the streets, they give him rides and applaud him for choosing to fight crime. Frank learns of his badass reputation and has trouble understanding social media, but his friends help him discern and accept his new title. He starts going on interviews and talk shows, making his mother, Juanita, proud. Sadly, Frank's mother passes on three months later. She leaves Frank her house as she wants him to stop his drifter life. As the house is too big and lonely for Frank, he decides to invite his friend and fellow Vietnam vet, Klondike Washington, to live with him. Klondike graciously accepts the invitation, and the two friends have such a great time living together. Klondike gives Frank a USB flash drive retrieved from Juanita's safe deposit box. He asks Frank whether he knows what is in the flash drive, but he doesn't. Klondike asks him to keep it safe, so Frank stores it in a safe. One night, Klondike is in an alley smoking cigarettes when two guys approach him. Klondike assumes that they are petty thieves, but is surprised when they ask him for the flash drive he retrieved from Juanita's safety deposit box. Klondike tries to deny seeing such a drive, but the gangsters execute him in cold blood and run away from the scene. The police call Frank to help identify Klondike's body. He is devastated and overwhelmed with grief to learn of the death of his closest friend. However, the detectives investigating the murder promise to do everything possible to find the people behind the heinous act. A few nights later, one of the detectives called Malark visits Frank. Frank wants to know what the progress into Klondike's murder is, so Malark assures him that they are doing the best they can to trace the thieves. Unfortunately, Frank's belief in the police system is thwarted when he finds out that the police have prioritized and solved another murder. Frank goes to the police station to confront the detectives, but he finds them having fun idly without giving much thought to Klondike's case. He realizes that if he wants justice for his friend, he has to get it himself. The first stop is at Klondike's murder scene. He goes through the scene with extra precaution, and his observation skills help him locate a used shell cartilage and a locket. The locket has a woman's picture on one side. He takes these items to the nearest pawn shop, hoping to get answers. The pawn shopkeeper easily recognizes the woman in the locket as a local gangster's wife. He directs Frank to the gangster Terence's house. Frank knocks on the door, and Terence's wife opens up. She reveals that Terence hasn't been home the whole of the week, and she doesn't know where he is. Frank hands her the locket, prompting her to have a change of heart and say that Terence plays basketball with some friends at the park, so they may have an idea of his current location. Frank's next stop is at the park. Frank approaches the playing guys and asks for Terence. As usual, the guys start laughing and mocking him, wondering what an old man like him is doing in those areas. Frank insists on getting an answer, but the youngsters approach him, ready to beat him. To their surprise, Frank easily beats them up, and eventually, they reveal what they know. They have no idea where Terrence is, but his best friend Ronaldo might have an idea. The guys give up Ronaldo's house, 
Ronaldo isn't at his house, but his roommate says he is hanging out at a bar. Frank quickly makes his way into the bar. Since most of the patrons are troublemakers, they ask Frank to leave. Frank tries to ignore them as he looks for Ronaldo, but the guys come at him. He has no choice but to fight them and put them in their place. Frank manages to get Ronaldo, who is scared of being beaten. He says that Terence is at his mistress's house. Meanwhile, the town's mayor meets up with a local crook called Panther. He asks Panther where his efforts in retrieving the flash drive are at. He is also furious about Klondike's murder, as he does not want this to reflect back on him. It's revealed that Klondike used to work for Panther. He had grown tired and wanted an out, but Panther was willing to let him go. Therefore, he discreetly stole some information from Panther's computer to use as a bargaining chip. The mayor wants Panther to get the flash drive before it falls into the wrong hands. Frank realizes that Klondike's murder might have something to do with the flash drive, so he enlists a neighborhood kid called Martin for help. Martin is amused at how old-fashioned Frank is, but he promises to help. The following day, Frank tracks down Terence's mistress at a beauty parlor. He follows her after work discreetly to her house. Frank sneaks into the house and accosts Terence, demanding information on who ordered the hit on Klondike. Terence refuses to cooperate, forcing Frank to shove his hand down the garbage disposal. The pain intensifies for Terence, and he reveals everything about Panther and the mayor. It appears that the mayor has taken bribes to allow illegal digging of a well in the neighborhood. Terence shares Panther's location, so Frank goes home to get ready. As he approaches his house, he hears commotion coming from his neighbor Martin's house. Frank breaks down the front door and assaults Martin's abusive father for beating his wife Amber. He warns the husband against causing any more trouble and kicks him out. Amber invites Frank to lunch to thank him for saving her life. During the meal, Amber gifts Frank a beautiful matchbox, and the two have a moment. But this is interrupted when Martin comes in as he has accessed the flash drive's information. Now that he has everything he needs, Frank prepares himself to take down Panther and the corrupt mayor. First, he gives the flash drive to Malark. He then tracks down Panther at his hideout. Unfortunately, Panther knows that Frank is coming after him, so he has his men ambush and capture him. Frank is knocked unconscious, and when he comes to, he finds himself bound. Panther asks Frank where the flash drive is, but Frank refuses to answer. Panther's men electrocute Frank for information, but he continues to remain silent. This treatment, however, reminds him of the horrors he faced in the war. Frustrated with Frank's silence, Panther grabs his wallet, hoping to find his home. Frank claims that there's nothing to see there, but Panther believes that he is keeping someone dear back home. This is true as Frank had invited Amber and Martin to stay with him while they waited for their door to be repaired. Panther instructs his men to eliminate Frank while he goes looking for the flash drive. Frank manages to escape his loose confines and uses a little matchstick he got from Amber to set fire to the warehouse, causing a massive explosion. Panther runs away with Frank following him. The two steal buses and create carnage on the drive to Frank's home. Eventually, both buses crash into each other, but the men survive. Frank follows Panther, but his movements halt when he comes across the two gangsters from the bus those months ago. The thugs retrieve their phones as they want to record themselves beating up Frank to reclaim their glory. Despite being wounded, Frank easily overpowers the two thugs and leaves them on the streets, cringing in pain. Eventually, Frank makes it to his house but finds that Panther got there first and is holding Amber and Martin hostage. Frank and Panther get into a fierce fight that leads them outside. Panther beats up Frank and is about to eliminate him when Amber heroically jumps on Panther's back, allowing Frank time to get back on his feet. Frank defeats Panther just as the police arrive and take him away. In the aftermath, the mayor's involvement in the oil scandal is exposed and he is arrested. Frank, Amber, and Martin live happily ever after trying to mend old wounds and create new memories.